I'd like to congratulate the noble Lord, Lord Truscott, for getting this debate uh, and for his introduction, though I have to say I shall come to some very different conclusions from his. Um, I chaired the Economic Affairs Select Committee, which reported on this subject in May 2014. I had thought, I mean, I have to say that it was one of the reports that got, according to our own press department's uh, survey, got one of the widest uh, attentions uh, of any select committee report at that time. And it was partly, of course, because of some concerns of environmental groups, but it was, went much wider than that. I had thought, given the wide-ranging background and knowledge of the select committee, environmental, climate change, economic, we had all of these things, that it would be very difficult to reach agreement. In fact, we had a unanimous report. Um, and uh, this was after a very wide range of expert witnesses. So my main conclusion remains, as did our report, that the benefits far outweigh the risks, and the risks can be controlled. <coughs> my main concern is that it is still far from certain that the benefits will be realised and achieved. Uh, what have been the developments since our report? First, the Government has made some beneficial changes to legislation uh, and senior ministers, past and present, have confirmed that, in principle, they are strongly in favour of shale gas exploration and production. Uh, as a major contributor to our energy mix, employment, import savings and with other benefits. Second, it is widely recognised that our regulatory and other environmental requirements are fit for purpose. Third, the Government has made some helpful changes to planning and tax legislation and offered community benefits to those affected. All this is very commendable, but progress is just too slow, there is no clear drive, and few results so far. <coughs> the history to date is of limited progress and no real awareness by the wider public of the benefits of shale gas as compared to the media attention given to protesting local and environmental groups. Since 2004, Government and Parliament have striven to meet all the environmental planning and other concerns, as of the industry and regulators and compensatory benefits have been given to local communities. All that is now in place. Yet still, no exploration drills have been drilled since 2011, so we still do not know the full potential, nor fully cover all the risks. Shale gas was drilling at a pre-exploratory stage, um, uh, since shale gas was drilling, uh, sorry, full potential, and no shale gas drilling is still at a pre-exploratory stage, no commercial operations have been authorised, and a lengthy application progress must be complete, uh, process must be completed before drilling can take place. Meanwhile, my lords, the world is passing us by. Only this week we learn that shale output from the Permian basis in Texas is expanding faster than the world thought possible. The founder of Pioneer Natural Resources there said, people just don't realise how big the Permian is. It will eventually pass the Guama field uh, in Saudi Arabia, and that is the biggest in the world. And he says, we have had such efficiency gains that break-even cost in the Permian area are close to $25. It took us 40 days to drill a well in 2014. We're already down to 20 days. And I have to say, I think we in the UK haven't even started. The US is going to get all the benefits unless we get a move on. So the reality is that shale gas drilling in the UK is still at an exploratory stage. Uh, no wells have been drilled in the UK since 2011. No commercial operations have been authorised and a lengthy application progress process must be completed before commercial group drilling can take place. The companies involved are running out of money quite quickly. The economic valuation is less favourable because the gas price has fallen uh, uh, considerably. The US is finding much more shale gas than originally anticipated, and companies there are reducing costs dramatically. There could be a wave of imports in the next few years, making it less favourable for companies to develop here, at a cost to the balance of payments, to employment possibilities, and to, and to security of supplies. I haven't dealt with the wider security aspects, but they are there too. My Lords, the Government is committed to shale gas development in the UK. We, in our report, called for a Cabinet Committee to be set up to get the right mix of incentives, to remove or <coughs> substantially reduce obstacles, and to give a strong steer to all the departments, local authorities and others, to make real progress. It hasn't yet happened. The benefits are likely to far outstrip the costs and the risks and the latter can be controlled, uh, and yet the benefits are still far from certain to be realised. 
Swift, in, in my view, swift progress uh, to uh, erect, r share gas production uh, needs greater public and political recognition and support, and we need to get on with it.